So with that, uh, let me go to the next uh, screen. And we'll just uh, start the uh, multiple choice. And I started doing this last semester and I did um, enjoy what kind of a demo this ended up being. So I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to cheat with the generative AI. And uh, again, uh, well, did I? Yes, I did say this when I was doing the one for the multiple choice time assessment for motion. And um, what I am doing, it is literally cheating. So I do want to be clear that you shouldn't do this. I'm doing this as a way to kind of, uh, as an instructor to keep up with what's the state of the art, uh, what's the, what are the capability of the most uh, um, up recent tool, you know, generative AI perplexity that I've been using with, um, with GPT-4, that's a better tool than what I was using last semester. So I'm testing it out that way. And if uh, any student does this, then it is cheating, so please do not do this. <laughs> um, and you know, it won't get you anything anyway. Uh, really, you are proof of what the physics that you have learned. That's uh, in uh, when you, I think I want to do this. That's uh, in uh, when we do the one on one meeting. You will be able to demonstrate the physics you have learned and whatever score you get in multiple choice timed assessment. Um, if it was honestly obtained, it will be useful in you assessing yourself. Seven or above is uh, actually a pretty good score, and um, but if you didn't complete it honestly, then it's useless. It doesn't get you anything, and you can't really use that to assess yourself well. So with that, let me get started. I'm going to just start, and I've done this enough times to know the 10 minutes is actually enough time for me to copy and paste and do the answer. And it may not be enough time uh, to actually for me to correct uh, some of these. This is where me being in a proper test student view will be useful. I can go into view, score the work mode and uh, go through the questions in a slower fashion. So let me start and uh, I will watch the time, try to answer all this within the 10 minute time limit using this um, advanced generative AI tool that again is cheating and you shouldn't be using in the fashion I'm having test student to use. I, I joke a test student is my worst student and this is I guess one of the ways in which test student is the worst. And again because test student is worst student he's not bothering to read the responses. And I, I can, uh, I think I said this last time, uh, I can imagine this actually being a useful tool if you are using it to help you understand the questions you got wrong. So that I see uh, being actually useful and uh, not having any uh, academic honesty implication. The problem would be if you are using this tool while you are um, working through the the multiple choice time assessment, which according to our rules, where you shouldn't be using any outside help, whether it's a generative AI or something else. Okay. I do think a GPT-4 is a slower than ChatGPT. I don't know if that will impact um, whether we can finish this in 10 minutes or not. But I will say that this is actually a game changer in terms of how much I, I can rely on my anti-cheating measures. Um, for this, one of the anti-cheating measures was meant to be the time limit, where 10 minutes was so short that people couldn't use check. But as I'm demonstrating right now, it's not so short that you can't use the generative AI. So, um, yeah. Um, that's one of the reasons I'm saying, you know, if you use a generative AI, that score doesn't mean anything because I know what is possible for students to do. So I don't necessarily look at a score of, let's say, eight here and automatically assume that must have meant uh, uh, you've done well on your own. Because uh, unless there are other evidences that back up that that is your work, um, maybe it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, the one-on-one -on -one check in meeting is the one that will um, that'll lay aside any doubts, any questions. Um, either you know physics or you don't. <laughs> so, and whatever uh, you are doing that helps you learn physics, it's fine. Because um, it will help you perform well in the one-on-one -on -one check in meeting. And whatever you are doing that's not helping you learn physics, 
uh, you should uh, consider that you should be preparing for that one-on-one -on -one checking meeting. So, yeah, and right now, you know, I'm not actually reading any of these questions because what I'm doing again is the kind of thing that a student should not be doing, um, where you are basically have turned your brain off as far as physics content is concerned, and you're just copying and pasting. And again, not a good thing not a smart thing <laughs> and not an honest thing. Mm -hmm. oh. right. uh, skip. Because, yeah, you know, I, I'm kind of acting like a cheating student where I don't have any clarifying information to give. I'm just to uh, uh, use it. And I believe if I just to do a regular copy, the um, the accessibility feature that's built in here will paste in. Let me just double check that it did paste in. Um, there should be a description of the figure. So the figure below shows, and yeah, free body diagram on the ball shows one, yeah, and okay, yeah. So, so that's the figure description, and I, and I think a generative AI uh, understands it well enough that I don't have to label that. Oh, this is the figure description. Uh, it's probably trained on the internet content that does the exact this kind of thing uh, for a uh, the ADA feature. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I think that is actually a correct answer. Perplexity with GPT-4 is good. Um, um, and, and that's actually one of the reasons I would say that maybe this is a good learning tool. Because if you're looking at the ones that you've answered, then you can't quite figure out which ones you missed, and uh, why the ones you missed, uh, you missed, then um, if this has a fairly good accuracy, maybe it can explain for you why um, a particular answer is correct, wrong, and so on. So, I think I have five minutes left. Uh, so I might have enough time to double check some of these answers. So we'll see. And I think the last time I did say I don't have to actually label these ABCD. It'll just uh, automatically uh, give it a number and answer based on that. But um, I'll just uh, do what I had been doing. Oh, wow. This one's going to be a pain to copy and paste. So I know mathematical expressions don't copy well. So I'm just going to uh, do that manually by hand. Uh, yeah, They don't really don't copy well. As shown, camera of mass. Okay. Mass what? Mass M is placed on a tripod. Okay, diagram shows. Okay, so A is going to be F is equal to 2 times the square root of 3 divided by 9 times MG. B is going to be F is equal to network error. Uh, um, I hope my video is coming through. C is... Um, F is equal to two thirds times M times G. D is uh, F is equal to square root of three divided by six times M times G. Um, network error thing went away, so let me try submitting it and see what happens. Yeah, I think it's fine. I, I don't know why there was a network error thing. Uh, skip. <laughs> yeah, that's where the some of the training comes from. Anyways, uh, all right, I an, uh, answered all 10. Let me just save work to make sure that, um, that nothing will be lost. Three minutes, that's not enough time for me to figure out um, if all the answers are correct. But let me just go through one by one and see. Uh, it correctly describes excellent something. Yeah, that seems correct. Correct. Um, uh, Choose the most correct statement. I can put the forward by because uh, no Newton's third law, so that's not most correct. Uh, it should be uh, well, it missed the one. Um, Lance Armstrong, um, choose the most uh, uh, yeah, zero net force, zero acceleration. Um, th there might be other forces, but uh, they add up to zero. Um, Constant speed, how does compared to the weight? Should it be the same? Yeah, three correct so far. Non zero. Uh, non zero net. So it should be the loss is changing, acceleration. 
is constant, non-zero net x constant. Yeah. Okay. So that's correct. Uh, choose the statement below. It's correctly for the uh, successfully less for the force is less. Yeah, because it's slowing down. Five. Um, yeah, I think I said that that's correct. The six uh, zero g parabolic hypergravity. It gives out an upward force on the passengers. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Seven so far. Uh, centripetal force and in that force yes yeah, sounds right oh uh, wow eight did, last one uh, each of them applies on the camera so it should be uh, greater than this because that would be if they are all directly upward but the way it's uh, so it's incorrect so it should have gotten 80 percent i don't think i have enough time to actually fix those two wrong oh meaning okay so i think i can fix one um so this one was wrong. Let me fix it to be uh, because of, um, I'm not sure, on a boat, no amount of, because, yeah, that is actually uh, correct. So I fixed the one now. It should be 90%. Let me see if I have time to, so it should be greater than this. Either it's a two thirds or, um, I don't know. Uh, well, let me leave it here. It'll be 90% and then I'll take time to actually fix it. 40 seconds. Yeah, not enough to... Because I think it's this is one of those things where unless I drew the free body diagram, I don't think I can actually answer it correctly. Um, although uh, one thing I can quickly do is... Yeah. Um, divide by nine so that's greater than that two-thirds is greater than, are they all greater than that that's annoying um, okay so it's this or this let me guess this one just in case um, it, it's a guess I will have to justify it with uh, can I save it okay um, either 90% or 100% we'll see <laughs> 100% great, I guess, the correctly. So uh, it's a combination of luck and I happen to, um, you know, I programmed in all these questions, so I remember a portion of it. So let's just review um, everything. So the eight questions, it got it correctly. Fine, no, uh, no notes there. The explanation is probably correct or in any case, correct enough. So question two, it missed. Um, I mean, here, if we associated this because of Newton's third law, it would have been correct, but it didn't. So let's see how it justified its uh, reasoning before. Um, oh, wait, I went up too far. Um, uh, project, uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, this one. This was the question, and it said the correct answer is C, uh, because it's accurate because this acceleration net force in the case of rocket force is generated by ejecting. Um, now, this part uh, would have required the citation of Newton's third law to justify. And um, so it's not the most correct given that this statement uh, correctly associates Newton's third law, you know, um, with the pushing within the boat, all the forces are internal forces. So considering the system of the whole, the, those equal and opposite forces cancel out. So there's no net acceleration of the system. Um, so given the presence of this choice, it, this is a more a better choice than this. Now, now, if this hadn't been one of the choices, then sure, maybe this would have been the best, but um, the most correct statement. But given the presence of this, this is more correct than the third one. That's one. And uh, question 10, I, I kind of expect, um, um, you know, perplexity or GPT-4 to not have done the calculation well. It's a language model. It doesn't do calculations well. Wait, what? Uh, Armstrong. What? That is insane. What? Wait, uh, it didn't answer right. Is this a whole network issue? Uh, let's give this a try because I'm just noticing now that um, um, well, uh, question I asked uh, had 
nothing to do with the Armstrong yeah, it was uh, let's see um, I think I do have to copy and paste um, yeah I'm just realizing it, it, that, that B had a you know um, <laughs> again, I had to turn my brain off so I didn't even realize uh, Uh, maybe it just doesn't know what to do with it, and that's why it just uh, skipped. Um, skip. Yeah, if we get it right, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I have no idea why it keeps referring to Armstrong. So let me just do this um, uh, by hand, um, properly, correctly. So. Um, so you do have to kind of imagine um, the drawing is going to be a little bit complicated. Uh, let me draw a kind of a frontal view and uh, two of the representative vectors and a third one that I can't quite draw well. I will leave it to your imagination in the three dimensions. So the free body diagram for this setup looks like um, so I'm just drawing this point on the camera where the support is happening. So on that point, there's going to be downward force of mg. And that's going to be balanced out by the force from each of these legs. And I'm going to draw two of them uh, kind of correctly with the, the 30 degree angle. Or I, I mean, actually not all that correctly because I'm drawing a projection of the 30 degree angle. And there's one more force that's kind of going this way, but uh, it's, uh, again, uh, 30 degrees from vertical. They are all 30 degrees from vertical. But these are all 30 degrees. So um, we, let me uh, kind of do the breakdown of the forces with one as an example. I think based on symmetry, it's enough to say that all these three um, have the same amount of force. Like, I hope that's kind of obvious that the magnitude of these forces will be the same. So if I do the breakdown of the forces with one, and it makes sense, then I can use the same argument for the other two that I can't quite show. So let me say this one um, is shown in such a way that I can break it down into horizontal and vertical component. And this would be 30 degrees with the vertical. And what I would say is that this horizontal component, it's just going to balance out. So I'm just going to look at the, so as I define my axis, you know, the X and the Y direction, just going to ignore the X axis and I'm just going to look at the Y axis. And as I look at the Y axis, what the uh, Newton's second law equation will be is the zero acceleration is equal to the sum of the forces, which will be, you know, three times the Y component of force there is equal to mg. So... So what you have is this one third mg, that would be correct for the y component of the force. So what I need to do is re rewrite this y component or express this y component of the force in terms of the, um, in terms of the, the magnitude of the force. So, you know, using uh, the trig functions, you know, remember so, ka, toa, uh, I have 30 degree identified here. This is the adjacent side, so I should be using this. The y component will be the hypotenuse times cosine of 30 degrees. And uh, this is where um, some knowledge of the special triangles would be helpful. Like uh, if uh, this length is one, then this length is one half. This length here should be square root of three over two. Because if you didn't, then you have to kind of plug a cosine of 30 degrees into calculator and that can uh, be eat up valuable time. But if you can say, okay, the one third mg is equal to y component, that's equal to f times cosine of 30 degrees, which should be the adjacent over hypotenuse or root 3 over 2, then you can quickly solve this for force f to say F is equal to reciprocal of this times one third. So two over three times root three mg. Uh, 
G. And imagine rationalizing this, and uh, for those of you who might have forgotten rationalizing a fraction, to rationalize uh, something with a radical on the denominator, you multiply top and bottom by the same uh, radical. That way the denominator becomes root 3 times root 3 is 3, so the denominator becomes 9, and all the square root irrational stuff is in the numerator, 2 times root 3. Uh, this kind of um, sim simplification technique, it's from the time when people used to have to do this kind of calculation by hand and it was better to divide by integer than a <laughs> irrational number. Uh, I think these days with the calculators, doesn't matter as much. Um, and uh, you can see that this is the same form as what I just tried. But this derivation took a ton of time, so uh, that's why... Uh, during the time limit, I did this um, kind of quick test-taking strategy, which is where I eliminated my choices down to plausible ones. Ones where, um, w once where the uh, highlighter, uh, once where the the magnitude of this coefficient was greater than one third, because that's one thing I was sure. So um, there were two of the choices that fit that description. So instead of making a one out of four guess, I was able to make one out of two guess. So I have the 50% chance of getting it right, and I happen to get lucky and also kind of remember <laughs> subconsciously <laughs> what the uh, program the answer was. Um, that part you can't, you can't do, but um, uh, limiting your choices down to two so that your guess has higher probability of being correct, that you definitely can do. And that's one of the skills that's uh, useful if uh, in any f your future job you have to take standardized exam. Um, <laughs> and I don't know how many jobs are out there where you have to do that, but to the extent that there are those jobs out there, it's a useful skill to have. Um, you know, if you're a good test taker, it doesn't necessarily mean you're smart, but it doesn't mean people will think you're smart, and that's that's useful. <laughs>